What are you doing? Is it time for like fire safety tips or something? In fact, it is. Today's fire safety tip is don't stand near a car that's on fire. Okay, why? All right, I'm glad you asked because it turns out that some cars have a bumper attached to them by a shock absorber. And this is to, you know, allow the bumper to absorb some of the hit when it bumps into something. And that in a car fire, that shock absorber can overheat and explode and send the bumper shooting out, potentially kneecapping anybody who's unfortunate enough to be standing in front of or behind the car on fire. I sense a car fire in our near future. I think it's definitely something we should test. Okay. Bumpers are designed to protect your car by absorbing some of the impact from a low-speed collision. But if your car's on fire, this myth contends that the gas-filled pistons can heat up to a point where the bumper becomes a deadly projectile, and its range is an incredible 50 feet. As far as the methodology goes, I think it's pretty straightforward. We just go to a junkyard, we get some bumpers of the appropriate type, we subject them to some really high heat, and we test them. Right, but since this whole thing is about what happens to these bumpers in a car fire, I think our very first step is to simply set a car on fire and take some measurements and readings to figure out what kind of temperatures we're actually talking about. Agreed. So the boys bowled up to the bomb range to set a car on fire. This is familiar Mythbusters territory. So how hard can it be? Well, as hard as you want to make it. <laughs> We're all right. What the hell are you doing? Having some fun. Jamie's idea of fun is likely different to yours, mine, and Adam's. Remember, kids, you really can and get in trouble with one of these things. <laughs> it's an apt start to a day that will not go quite to plan. We have found some potential cases of this actually happening, that maybe bumpers shot off during car fires, and uh, the researchers have found us a make and model similar to those in the reports that we have. So we're going to set this thing on fire, find out how hot a car fire actually gets, take temperature readings all around it, and uh, if we're very lucky, maybe we'll get a uh, bumper shooting off. That would be a bonus, but remember, their primary purpose is to see just how hot a car fire gets. Fortunately, there's some adult supervision on hand. Good morning, we got uh, just a small car fire we're gonna set and hopefully help ask you guys to put out. No problem, sir. Adam draws on boyhood skills to raise the car and strip the wheels in next to no time. Here in California, it's a crime to burn tires. For some reason, it's not a crime to wear a silver suit with suspenders. As Adam slips into something less comfortable, Jamie considers the finer details. We're going to light the car on fire, and being as the engine has fuel, it has oil, it has plastic parts, it's got batteries with electricity. You've got all the elements you need to create an energetic fire. And that also happens to be the area around the bumper. So that's where we're gonna focus our ignition and uh, we'll see what happens. And just for good measure, <laughs> when the car's ablaze, they'll get accurate temperature measurements by circling it with a thermal imaging camera. That ought to do, what do you think? Go for it. This is fun. But try as he might, Adam can't manage to set fire to the engine, even though it's swimming in gasoline. Making fire is something even cavemen mastered. But we've struggled with this before. Who could forget the shaky start to trailblazers? It's hard stuff to light. It only lights when it gets mystified. This delayed ignition is risky business, and statistically, it's getting more perilous by the second. I mean, nothing's gone wrong for almost 40 minutes. Whoa! All right. I'm okay. You got a little bit of a haircut there, didn't you? I got a little bit of a, not a haircut, I got a little bit of a hair on the back of my hand. 